I'll be telling you how I passed the AZ 900 in two weeks. Stay tuned. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for coming to the channel. Welcome back to Textual Chatter, where I'm the main guy, HD. It's also the home of the Textual Talk podcast. And um, I talk about tech, career, a little bit of finances, sometimes lifestyle, confidence, uh, you name it. And if you're interested in those things, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button. And share it out to your social media to help me with the YouTube algorithm. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subs as soon as possible. But hey, so if you clicked on this video, you've probably been thinking about getting into the cloud and what different type of search to take. And maybe you gl glanced over the AWS Cloud Practitioner. If you didn't, I got a video for you right there. But maybe you say, you know what? I need to learn uh, Azure, maybe for work, or you're trying to look for potential roles and look no further. I think this will be the video for you. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll give a little bit of background on reasons why I want to take the Azure 900. I did AWS Cloud Practitioner a couple of, what, a couple of years ago and pretty cool test, definitely opened my eyes about AWS. But um, a while back, I had made some virtual machines in Azure and saw like some of the free money they gave you. And I had been working with Azure Alerts at uh, different companies. So I was like, you know what? Let me see what are the differences between AWS and Azure. And pretty much there's a lot of overlap in between the two. And that's one of the reasons why I was successfully able to do stuff on this test. So I'm going to say right now, warning, I don't think you should do this method if you don't have any previous cloud experience because the objective is to learn about the cloud not to pass the test now if you just need to pass it you know and they're going to give you a job or it works so you need to go do the cert like i said this is a quick way to do it but if you don't know anything this way isn't going to help you get a job because you're not gonna be able to soak up that much information from all these different services that are mentioned in the AZ 900, the Azure Fundamentals and Exam. But without further ado, let's get into it. The Azure 900 is pretty much the fundamental exam by Azure where it talks about pricing, security and compliance, uh, networking. It talks about, uh, you got like, pol oh, I said compliance, but like policies, different things when it comes to like the cost center and the marketplace, uh, similar to what the cloud practitioner does. And they want to judge judge you on that. And now some of these sections are rated at a higher percent and I'm going to read them off my phone to you. So give me a second. So cloud concepts is pretty 20 to 25% of the tests. Then you have uh, core Azure services, which is 15 to 20%. Core solutions and management tools, 10 to 15%. Describe general security and network security features. That's 10 to 15% as well. Governments is 15 to 20%. And Azure cost management and service level agreements is 10 to 15%. And I say that um, I probably struggled with in the beginning. Most of, the, most of it was like the core services. Like I understand already about uh, the networking part and the security and compliance part. I, I have been doing that. You already know uh, about like uh, the cloud's ability for elasticity and scalability and, uh, you know, pretty much able to just make anything more affordable than having your stuff on prem. But I think some of those core services and some of the things that have to do with like the different uh, databases, um, you know, that kind of had me a little bit just because it is a little bit different verbiage and I don't work with databases on a daily basis. Um, here's a big tip. The first thing I did was schedule my tests. And the reason why I scheduled my tests was because it keeps me accountable to actually study. One of the reasons why it took me so long to get the cloud practitioner is because I never book to take my test, which let me slack off in my studying. And trust me, man, you don't want to do that. You want to stay on a certain where you schedule three months out, two months out, you know, two days out, some do it. It's going to help you out. And then what I did was bought this course right here, bought this course by Scott Duffy. And this dude's a pretty good instructor. I didn't listen to all his lectures because I tried a new study method. So what I ended up doing was that I took his practice test in this course first, ended up passing it. So that was big for me. I said, I know I knew 
more than enough about the cloud. I'm not like a total newbie here. I do know stuff about it. And a lot of the uh, ver- verbiage from AWS crossed over into Azure and just a little bit of subtle differences. So what I decided to do was, and I made this LinkedIn post actually talking about this um, one, cause I like to brand myself and kind of tell people what their thoughts is about, you know, what I'm planning on and people can give me tips on what I need to look at. And you can see right here, I definitely got a lot of comments on it, but uh, what I did was after that was focus on the stuff I didn't know. And that pretty much helped, you know, shave a lot of time down on my studying. Cause think about it. Why would you focus on stuff you already know? You need to focus on stuff you don't know so you pass the test. And so I did that for a while. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't really study consistently. I got kids, life, work. You know, it's hard to do, man. It really is. But so after I did that and I started getting those test answers right all the time, it's like, you know what? This is kind of easy. Let me go look for some different resources. And shout out to Dom's Tech Chat because I think I can't remember if I reacted to her video or whatever video she was talking about, about Wiz Labs, but I went and did Wiz Labs because it's a rule of thumb. You don't want to just take one t- practice test and think you know everything. You want to do multiple different resources to combine them. That way they overlap on stuff you missed. And these tests was harder. I didn't pass these on the first go around. So which lets me know I need to, I need to tighten up the screws. So I did that a couple of days and after that, I was getting 90s on every test. So once I decided I was getting 90s on every test, I knew, okay, I think it's time. You know, I'm ready to take the test. Well, wait, I got a little ahead of myself. The time it was supposed to, for me to take the test, I was not there. I was close, but I was not ready to take it. So what I ended up doing was that I scheduled it for two days after my date that I was supposed to uh, take it. It was like I went to study on like a Sunday. It was, uh, I want to say the beginning of the playoffs. And I um, was trying to go to Barnes & Noble, get some studying in. And I was like, I'm just not there. So that Sunday, I rescheduled it to like a Wednesday morning. And, you know, it came Wednesday. I took it, passed it. Uh, with flying cuz I, I, I think I got like a 800 something. And you only need a 700 to pass it. Uh, so I passed it. But let me talk a little bit about the actual test and my experience. Let's talk about the testing center. So I get to the testing center and the the guy's not paying attention. And you know, he he's a he's a different nationality, of course. So maybe that's a little bit I can't remember him speaking. I don't know if he spoke to me at all. Honestly, I can't remember. But after I got past that, got in there and sat down, you know, it was fine. I got the test going. Now let's talk about the test. The test was pretty much very simple, straightforward. Uh, there wasn't a lot of tricky questions. They're straight to the point, but you had to make sure you read them all the way through because it could be asking you something, but it could be asking you something specific. But if you just stopped at the first beginning thinking you already knew the answer, you'll be wrong. So I just made sure I took my time, read every question out, and I answered them to the best of my ability. And the best of my ability got me a score of, I believe I had like 800 something. So past that first try like i said two weeks i know you probably want to know hey what can i do with the job what can i give aws well check this out i mean azure so check this out what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the path i decide i want to do is like the security engineer route it has these different azure certs but you get to learn different skills within azure with different tools with azure and microsoft but you know let me show you exactly this uh, roadmap they have okay so Check this out. They have a they have a security engineer path and it had these different certs on here. Okay, yeah. So check this out. Check this path out. You learn about security operations of Azure, cloud applications of Azure, threat modeling, manage identity and access, you know, resource management, learning path. That's one. And then there's some other popular things for security engineers. Azure 900, I mean 400, DevOps. I don't think I'll be looking into that. I think I'll be looking into the uh, Microsoft Security Analyst one. 
Uh, let's see. It's right here. Microsoft Certified Security Operations Analyst Associate. Because a lot of people come to me about being a SOC analyst, so that's a SC200. And let's see what you need to have. take that exam. Uh, nothing. I guess it wants you to, and I already know how to do so with um, Defender. I haven't used Sentinel or Defender for a cloud, so it's different. But the good thing is, if you don't want to spend money, Microsoft has their own stuff for you to take this test. As you can see, there's a lot of free stuff on here. So it's really no reason. It's only 165. It's a lot of tests that cost way more. Uh, let's see what this is. Uh, Training certification guide. Let's see, I'm just gonna click on it, you know, not to bore y'all, but let's see what they got. That's pretty cool. I'll tell you exactly what you need. I'm not gonna hold you too much longer from that, but honestly, what's next for me is I got a lot of different things I'm working on. One of the things is though, is to make sure that i work on some more azure certs and these will just be more learning things like i said i have some things that we do do with azure at work anyway so all the stuff helps me at work i'm a big proponent of only getting certs that helps you at your job like now it's different when you don't have a job but most of the time don't just you can't i'm telling you like just because you get a lot of certs ain't gonna mean much if you didn't learn nothing, certs don't equal skills. You know, putting that on the shirt for everybody who be just trying to get people to get certs. Now I get it. Sometimes you need to get a foundation of certain type of certs, but after that, now it's time to focus on skills. Um, you know, that's pretty much how I feel about it. Uh, so, but if you enjoyed this video, man, please make sure you share it out to the, your social media. Um, comment below, and um, also you can comment. You know, if you're want me to do any other type of videos you know let me know that as well because i'm always open to suggestions i've always this researching certain things i could do that maybe someone else didn't do but hey you know what it is i appreciate jay i appreciate you all <laughs> for coming to the channel man uh, it's been a good one and it's been real it's your boy and i'm out